Hey guys, what is up? I hope you're having an amazing evening. We have a big week coming up with earnings reports from a lot of exciting companies. In this video, I am going over with you the stocks I'm watching for the week of October 26. These companies listed are some of my favorite companies and I do hold positions in some of these companies. I am anxious to see how they will do, if they will be analyst estimates or if they will have a loss. I hope not. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it, and subscribe if you are new. I would greatly appreciate the support for this channel. With that being said, let's get right into the video. So as you can see, the first company we are talking about is Pfizer. I do hold a long-term position in the stock as we speak. I believe it is a great company and it is a pretty good dividend stock as well. Also not to mention it has been said that their vaccine is looking promising. Pfizer will report third quarter 2020 results on October 27th before market open. In the last reported quarter, the company delivered an earnings surprise of 21.88%. The drug giant's performance has been mixed with the company exceeding earnings expectations in three of the last four quarters while missing in one. The company has a four quarter earnings surprise of 12.53% on average. Looking at this price and EPS chart on Zacks between the years of 2016 and 2020, we can see Pfizer has had a history of more positive surprises with only three negative surprises with their earnings reports, which is really, really good. A few key factors to consider is Pfizer's sterile injectables portfolio, which is likely to have benefited from increasing demand due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Pfizer believes its anti-infective medicines as well as other sterile injectable products are utilized in the incubation and ongoing treatment of mechanically ventilated COVID-19 patients. And a developing factor is that in early October, Pfizer and its Germany-based partner BioNTech began rolling submission of their mRNA-based coronavirus vaccine candidate BNT162B2 to the European Medicines Agency. Pfizer and BioNTech selected BNT162B2 out of four mRNA-based coronavirus vaccine candidates for late-stage development as a demonstrated better results in early stage studies. Eventually, if the vaccine is approved, Pfizer and BioNTech plan to manufacture up to 100 million doses by the end of this year and potentially more than 1.3 billion doses by the end of 2021. Looking at the analyst estimates for their earnings, we can see analysts are estimating 71 cents per share with estimated revenue of $12.33 billion for Q3 of 2020. Now, I am looking to increase my position with this stock. I'm thinking of doing it before earnings. I know that it's like really risky to do that, but I have a pretty high risk tolerance, so I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Next stock we're talking about is Microsoft. Their earnings are going to be taking place on the same day as Pfizer on October 27th, but after the market closes. The consensus among analysts polled by FactSet is for the software giant to post September quarter revenue of $35 billion, up 8% annually and both GAAP and non-GAAP EPS of $1.54. Now for the Zacks chart, we can see this beautiful uptrend of Microsoft and beautiful positive surprises from past earnings, with only one negative in this chart and that is something you like to see in companies' past reportings. There are seven factors to watch, such as their commercial bookings and RPO growth, Azure, Office and Dynamics, Windows, Gaming and Surface, LinkedIn, and Stock Buybacks. Microsoft's Office offerings remain vital to businesses, students, and many others. Last quarter, its Office 365 commercial revenue jumped 19%. The pandemic also highlighted the importance of its stay-at-home segments such as Teams, which compete against Slack work, Zoom video, and others. Microsoft's Azure is growing at extraordinary rates with year-over-year -year growth rates of approximately 50% to 60%. Total adjustable market is thought to be $3.7 trillion, where so far only about 3% has been addressed by players. Recent moves by companies to embrace cloud, specifically Azure, due to COVID will drive revenue upwards at what might be better than expected rates. As for analysts and what they are predicting, they are predicting an earnings per share of $1.54 and predicted revenue of about $36 billion. With that being said, you guys, be on the lookout for Microsoft's earnings on Tuesday. In my opinion, I expect them to beat the analyst estimates by far. Next company is one of my favorite e-commerce companies, Etsy. I believe they are rapidly growing in the e-commerce world, and I also do hold a long-term position in them and will be increasing my position. Etsy will be looking to display strength as it nears its next earnings release, which is expected to be October 28, 2020. On that day, Etsy is projected to report earnings of $0.59 cents per share which would represent year-over-year -year growth of 391%. Meanwhile, the Zacks consensus estimate for revenue is projecting net sales of $418 million, up 111% from the year-ago period. Moving on the Zacks chart for Etsy, if we take a look at past earnings reports, we can see that Etsy has marked huge surprises in their earnings, with majority of them being over 50%. 
That is so, so good. I am hoping for this with their Q3 earnings. I have faith that they will positively surprise immensely. That's how much I believe in this company. Etsy has been doing incredibly insane during this pandemic, especially with their mask sales. This is one thing I talked about in my Etsy analysis video last time. Business is booming well beyond masks. Non-mask sales grew 93% in the second quarter, accelerating versus a 79% increase in April. Most of the customers who go to Etsy for the first time in order to buy masks end up buying other products too and many of them will remain on the platform going forward. Masks are providing a short-term boost to revenue, but this category is also attracting lots of buyers and sellers to the platform while creating plenty of opportunities for the company going forward. Now what are the analysts saying? Analysts are reporting earnings per share of 58 cents with estimated revenue of $411 million. Guys, I am so excited to see the results and I'm hoping for an insane surprise, a positive surprise with their earnings. And like I said before, I do have faith. Now for the last stock to watch is Pinterest. Pinterest is slated to report its third quarter 2020 results after the market close on Wednesday, October 28th. The image sharing platform operator is heading into its report on a strong note. In the second quarter, it breezed by Wall Street's estimates for both the top and bottom lines. Investors sent shares soaring 36 the day after results were released. In 2020, Pinterest stock is up a whopping 158% through October 20 compared with the S&P 500's 8.2% return. Since the company's April 2019 IPO, shares have gained 139% while the broader market has returned 22% over this period. Now that is insane. Wall Street's Q3 2020 consensus revenue estimate is at $377 million, with a projected change year over year of 35% and an earnings per share estimate of two cents, with a projected change year over year of 100%. Moving on to Zach's EPS surprise chart, we can see Pinterest had a positive surprise of 53% last quarter. In my opinion, I believe they can beat their Q2 earnings report fairly well above that. A few factors to consider is Pinterest's initiative to improve user engagement by announcing inclusive product updates during the quarter to increase the discoverability of beauty products and tutorials personalized to individual skin tone, style, and preference, which is expected to have accelerated conversion of searches into product purchases in the soon-to-be-reported quarter. A second thing to look at is more improvement for their creators including story pins and beta, a new creator profile and analytics tools to track performance. Thirdly, Pinterest is expanding in other countries such as the UK, Canada, Australia, Singapore, and more. And this is expected to have contributed to international user-based growth in the to-be-reported quarter. And lastly, user growth in Pinterest has seen a rise. On July 31st, Pinterest announced crossing 400 million monthly active users milestone with Gen Z and millennials driving growth. Male users on Pinterest also jumped nearly 50% year over year. This is a lot of great factors to consider ahead of Pinterest's earnings call. So it is a very exciting week starting tomorrow. A lot of great companies that are reporting earnings. Be sure to be on the lookout for these four companies and their earnings calls. I know I will. I am hoping and believing for these companies to be estimates given the factors we talked about, but we shall see. With that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video and hope to have given you some valuable information in any way. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos just like this one. Also, don't forget to turn on those post notifications to be notified every time I post a new video. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, peace.